Hi guys, I am uh, attempting a screen share instead of a, a normal video, so I thought I'd show you this. Um, someone asked a question around whether you should use, um, well, basically Botox on the lower face and particularly the depressor angularis oris and what that means for, um, in terms of side effects and risks and uh, and the point I wanted to make is around dermal fillers as well, because actually you can treat downturn mouth using dermal filler very effectively. And part of the effect is the effect that it has on the depressor angularis oris. So um, let's first just have a look at um, the anatomy down here. So it, when you, if you've done advanced training, you'll know that we're, the, injecting the depressor angularis oris can be a little bit um, tricky. So as in, if you get it in the wrong place, you can see by looking at this diagram where the problem might be. Um, if you inject a little bit too deep, a little bit too medial, um, you can get the depressor labii muscle here. And if you get the depressor labii muscle, a smile that um, where you, you're actually, if I'm just drawing on top of here, what a smile would look like, you knock out the bit of the muscle that pulls, that pulls this way, and you get a, a smile that, um, let me just, I'll draw it next to here actually. So your smile that should look like this ends up looking like that. And that's a very unpleasant, this is the lower lip by the way. I hope this is, this is a, probably should have done a better diagram. But um, it's that normally this muscle pulls down and you've affected it. So an asymmetrical smile is really noticeable. Your smile is very important to people. And if you create a, um, a smile that doesn't look um, I've just realized, are you seeing me on here? Yeah. Um, if you create a smile that looks asymmetrical, they will notice even a little bit, it's really upsetting. So asymmetrical smiles are one of the problems of, of treating the depressor angularis oris with a uh, toxin. Now, in order to avoid it, it's worth noticing that there is a, a very clear angle, a triangle shape here where there's no muscle. And if you contract your own uh, DAO, which you can do uh, just by fiddling around with your face, you'll feel that there's a there's a little triangle that you can you can feel between the rosaurus, the depressor angularis oris, and the master, um, and that should help you f help you find the border of this muscle. Now, the lower down you get to uh, along here, the closer you get to the angle of the jaw, the more likely you are going to be involved with the depressor labii. So it's one of the one of the reasons why um, on our advanced training we we would teach you to inject at this midpoint. By the way, this is just a kind of interesting video on it. I don't recommend that you treat anyone based on this video. You need to actually look at a patient with a, with someone who's experienced who can show you exactly um, where the point is to inject. But essentially, this is the, this is the key concept that you need to know about um, how to feel for it, is that there's this little triangle and you can inject um, the muscle in a point roughly over here that's less likely to affect the depressor labii. So that's the Botox side of things. Um, I will say a couple more things about it. Firstly, Botox is, um, I feel like it's a little bit less predictable than, than dermal fillers and a little bit less adjustable because you have to wait two weeks. So you put some product in and you hope you've hit the, hit the mark and then you have to wait. And sometimes there's some asymmetry and sometimes it works too well and sometimes it doesn't work too uh, well enough. Uh, and, that, and then you're in this process of trying to make adjustments every two weeks. So that's a big downside with Botox. The upside is it's cheap because it's only a couple of units at a time. Um, so that's better for your patient. But uh, if you're going to use a dermal filler, you can actually, in older people, create a very similar effect, which is um, if you think about what happens with muscles as you get older, if they aren't supported underneath, and that happens because, number one, the bone itself gets smaller. So your actual bone will get smaller as you get older, which means this muscle is actually able to contract more because it's less resistant. It's less stretched out. That's one of the reasons um, there's more activity in older faces. But also you lose the fat both on top of it and there'll be a little bit of fat underneath it. Um, and that means this muscle is able to con contract more easily. You get a, a degree of hyperdynamic um, activity in muscles as you get older. Um, and that's that's why you get a downturn um, in some people's faces. Obviously, that's not the only reason why, because uh, underneath you've also got these fat pads which um, which are changing. So it's not to ignore. You can't ever solve a problem in the face just with one uh, one means. So think about what's happening with all these fat pads in faces as you get older because um, this these fat pads here, the jowl fat pad and the, and the, the lateral cheek fat pad, gets uh, they get disproportionate. So laterally they often get smaller, the middle cheek gets bigger 
um, the jowl fat or the nasolabial fold might get bigger. So this tends to get heavier and it then is pushing down on this area where the DAO is also pulling down. So sometimes a way to, to treat it is to is to replace the fat in this area and some with dermal filler. And sometimes it really helps to actually uh, affect the bone by going deep and getting underneath the muscle, replacing the, the volume underneath the muscle. And that can create an instant lifting effect, uh, which is worth thinking about. So it's not as simple as just Botox or filler. There are, two, there are many reasons why we get older. Um, muscles get more active because they are less opposed by fat. Um, and uh, bone gets smaller, which means the muscle is able to contract more um, because it's, there's basically it's a long muscle on a that used to be stretched out by bone and fat, and now it's it's more it's more free to move. So that's one of the reasons why Botox is a good thing um, to do as well. So combine them both. Uh, in some people, I think dermal filler is more predictable. I like using filler; you can create a, an instant um, gratifying result straight away. But it's important to have it in your toolkit and to know how to avoid about the side effects. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, let's have a look. Any um, any questions? So I've got a few people saying hi. Hi everyone. Hi. Um, Molly, Jody, Rachel, um, I'm just attempting the screen the screen sharing. I think I prefer being able to see myself. It just feels a bit feels a bit, and I can't switch back unfortunately. So um, I might look at some software to do that a different way. But I hope that's helped you think a little bit about the DAO um, and how you can avoid an asymmetrical smile. And hope it's also allowed you to think more about how filler enables you to do the same thing. You can create that lifting, um, and uh, I'm hopefully going to get back into the rhythm of lives. It's been. I had the, the busiest last few weeks of uh, August and September ever, <clears throat> and I just I got out of the rhythm, but I'll be back into it soon, doing more live videos. So um, keep the questions coming, and I will keep trying to help you guys out. Um, but I hope that helps in the meantime. Um, please tag anyone who you think might be interested in this, and um, thank you once again for the comments. They mean a lot to me. Um, I do read them all, um, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you on another live soon.